good afternoon everybody so we shall uh, do some uh, one or two questions from urc uh, i have given you a assignment not an assignment rather is past paper a set of past paper questions uh, covering urc right and uh, also an assignment which relates to inco terms yes there are about four questions uh some questions i have modified uh, according to the new version right the especially the 2009 question i have modified and uh, then uh, apart from that i have uh, given you a presentation with regard to the volume facilities go through leisureis uh, in a natural form right and uh, <clears throat> we'll do we we'll try to you know attempt uh, to uh, uh give a little bit of saving on the structuring also as well and i do a, i'll do a forex sum also today right starting with the uh, urc now this is the presentation i need to take it right hope everyone have this uh, uh what do you call the the the, the tutorial comprising of all past papers right question number 2 question number 2 right this is the question you are a branch manager of uh, your bank uh, you have been called to join a panel of speakers in an open forum discussion of loyal exporters problems the following question is posed by the audience we have recently been approached by uk company to arrange a supply of tea the terms of uh, terms quoted as 90 days after shipment da as it is a buyer's market they are unable to very vary the terms of shipment what risks are there in the company accepting this quotation and can you indicate any remedies right so uh, and also it says uh, in brief note form cover the points which you would make outlining the three risks to the company your recommendation to help the company to overcome those risks that you have mentioned right now this is a past paper question based on 15 March fifteen. Uh, so there are you have you have to take it down quickly. So in trade, you get uh, involved with the buyer and the seller, no? right? So you have the buyer, buyer's buyer and the seller, and uh, when you talk about the seller's risk, is the buyer's uh, worthiness and the buyer's importer's country risk, right? likewise that uh, the buyer expect uh, the seller is been expected to send across the quality of the goods so there are risks of the seller's country also as well and uh, then uh, we will put down uh, uh, one uh, underneath the other the risk country risk country risk right now this a uh, uk company so what is the risk that you can uh, think of UK may, UK government may impose restrictions. So that's one of the country risks, right? UK government may impose restrictions or sanctions. So that's the country risk. Then the buyer risk. What is the buyer risk? It's very free of AC. Buyer buyer risk is. when the documents are sent across the presenting bank by the remitting bank at the request of the principal 
there could be a, a rare incidence where because of the drop of the the goods market he will not show up or in other words he will not take up the documents right so that one you take it down bias risk first one is the country risk the bias risk buyer may not take up the documents buyer may not take up the documents buyer may not take up the documents or he might take up the documents but will not talk to or rather will not he will avoid to pay at maturity because it's a DA document that they are talking of in the question no? so when they take up the documents means he will accept the bill of exchange for payment at maturity but at maturity he will not pay he will shy away so that's another risk right so you say buyer may take up the documents Obviously, when you take up the documents, he will clear the goods source as well, right? So, do a small correction. Buyer may take up the documents and goods. And goods. But not pay at maturity. But not pay at maturity. And uh, what's your paper say? Three risks. Other, other risk case we can think of uh, uh, transit risk. Transit risk. T R A N S S I T. Transit risk. The question concerned is about uh, T packaging, right? Uh, Yeah, so you can say uh, T, T, oblique packing, that is either T or packing of T, right? T, oblique packing could get spoiled, could get spoiled, oblique damage. That is, T might get spoiled or packing might get damaged, right? Get spoiled, damaged on its UK to, on its uh, what you call journey to UK. On its journey to UK. They're talking about T export from Sri, Sri Lanka to UK. Right. So, how to address the country risk or try to mitigate the country risk is, but in this question, this particular question, the country is like may not happen because it's a, it's a, it's a developed country and it's a industrial country and also the economically it's a strong country, right? So you say. Remember, you need to answer the question, right? Right. Don't don't uh, don't state generic questions. Say. Uh, country risk. That is the next question, right? The recommendation to help the company to overcome these risks, right? So, country risk may not be applicable, may not be applicable since it's the UK. Since it's the UK. But who knows, acts of God could happen, right? However, could be covered by insurance. However, could be covered by insurance. Bias risk. Bias risk. Failure to take up the goods. Failure to take up the goods. That's one of the risks that we have identified. Failure to take up the goods. Right. Hyphen, you say. 
insert insert that is include insert uh, a store and insure clause store and insure clause on the collection order on the collection order or name or name case of need case of need in the uk in the uk with the extended authority with the extended authority and for your references in parenthesis take it down article 10 and 25 article 10 and 25 Fail to pay except the bill. Now the customer has taken the documents and the goods have been cleared, but he failed to show up at maturity. And that is one of his responsibilities because once the bill of exchange has been accepted by the buyer, he is actually liable to pay at maturity to the seller. Now we have a risk now. Failure to pay accepted bill. So no need of saying at maturity, right? Failure to pay except the bill. Took it down. Failure to pay except the bill. I fail. Insert what clause now? Insert a protest call, protest clause. Insert a protest clause within parenthesis, Article 24. Take insurance against non payment. Take insurance against non payment. Obtain a satisfactory status report. Obtain a satisfactory status report on buyer. Usually when the sellers come to the bank and seek pre-shipment facilities or post-shipment facilities, then always the bank will query the age of the buyer. And if he's transacting business with the buyer for the first time, or perhaps for the second time rather, then the bank will advise him to take a status report uh, uh, with regard to the buyer. Because we do not know whether the buyer is prompt in his commitments and kind of thing. Actually, the status report being obtained not by the customer, by the bank, uh, but it's a costly affair but that the sales report is a must actually uh, before financing the seller. So the bank should have had uh, taken the status report with regard to the buyer uh, before uh, falling into some kind of transaction. Right. So you can say obtain a satisfactory status report on buyer status report. Right. Hmm. Then the next one we were talking about, we talk about country risk and the bias risk, and the other one is the transit risk, right? Say transit risk. Advice, advice, the use of a reliable freight forwarder. Both of the transit risks happen because of, uh, because of, uh, unknown or less reputed freight forwarders right so advise the use of a reliable freight forwarder that's lots of things the bankers should do before falling into transaction and purchase the uh, bill uh, advise the use of a reliable freight forwarder ensure the goods the second point ensure the goods adequately As per the inco term, now you know why I am saying that because there are certain inco terms which covers from port to port. There are certain inco terms which covers from landlocked place from inland and to a inland in the port of discharge. Right. 
So insure the goods adequately as per the trade term or income term. Right. So that's the uh, uh, what do you call uh, the complete answer. Right. Question number four. Question number four. ABC Garments Limited, a customer of your bank, manufactures designer shorts and is funding, finding ready markets in France and Germany. Sales are invoice in euro. The French buyer readily accepts bill of exchange, drawn at 30 days' sight, sent direct to him by ABC Garments. But the funds do not arrive until some six weeks after the bill of bill fall date. <clears throat> As regards the German buyer, he usually forwards a personal check drawn to euro, which takes three weeks to clear, putting pressure on company's cash flow. <clears throat> the company CFO calls to see you to find out whether there is any way in which you can assist the company in reducing the time before cleared funds are <clears throat> credited to the company's account. <coughs> the French buyer is unwilling to document the credit, but you are asked if there is any other method which the bank can assist to reduce the delay in receiving funds to the credit of the customer's account. Uh, customer's account. Explaining the following description of the basic method by which the bank can help the customer to obtain payment without unacceptable delays. Right? So you can uh, structure the answer in point form regarding ABC garments. And uh, ABC garments is the exporter, in other words, he's coming to your bank, right? To our bank, in other words. All uh, right. So we we'll identify who are the parties. So ABC is a principal. Take it down. Point form ABC is the principal. Principal. Get the spelling right. Spell it as ending with P A L, right? ABC principal. Our bank is the remitting bank. Our bank is the remitting bank. The overseas bank will be the overseas banking will be the collecting oblique presenting bank. It could be the collecting or the presenting bank, right? So overseas bank will be the collecting or the presenting bank. This uh, goods are going to the going to France, right? So fresh buyer will be the draw V. French buyer will be the draw V of what? Of the bill of exchange. French buyer will be the draw V, D R A W E E, draw V of the bill of exchange. You can say B, capital B, simple low, capital E, bill of exchange. Document soft title. Document subtitle, which is backers bill of lading. Document subtitle will be attached, will be attached with the bill of exchange. Document subtitle, that is the bill of lading, is attached with the bill of exchange. And the presenting bank. And the presenting bank will release the documents. Will release the documents against payment or acceptance 
means this is documents against payment or acceptance as per the correction instruction as per the correction instruction <coughs> Second one, a specific variation of the basic method which should be suitable for the needs of the fresh importer who obviously requires credit terms. Right, specific variation of the basic method which would be suitable for the German buyer who is willing to pay as soon as required. Right. <clears throat> so the third one, a specific variation of the basic method which should be suitable for the needs of the French importer uh, who obviously requires credit terms. Right, you can say an alternative guarantee. An alternative guarantee of payment payment would be accepted would be accept accepted <clears throat> avalized avalized a v a l i z e d avalized where the french bank would endorse french bank means the importers bank right where the French bank would endorse the accepted bill and its own guarantee and its own guarantee own guarantee of payment payment uh, payment on due date on the due date on the due date specific variation of the basic method which would be suitable for the german buyer who is willing to pay as soon as required but documents against payment right Documents against payment. That is DP. How the method one and two above will give some protection to ABC Garments Limited and indicate reasons why the buyers in France and Germany could be expected to comply with any condition regarding payment. Uh, uh, how the how the Method one and two above will give some protection to ABC garments, right? <coughs> Say, as this method of payment will give some protection to both ABC and uh, both ABC and French and German buyers Since most banks and countries, you can say since or because, right? Since most banks and countries, such as Sri Lanka, such as Sri Lanka, Germany and France,
सब्सक्राइब टू सब्सक्राइब टू द यू आर सी फाइव ट्वेंटी टू right so try and make an attempt it's not a difficult uh, assignment fast papers are much easier so uh, anyway just try and uh, if there's a difficulty i will tackle the question number 6 try the question number 6 and come next time i'll do the question number 6 of this uh, uh, assignment uh, and you can uh, try the other questions also as well so I will not pursue further with regard to URC except for the question number six. Right, take the inqu uh, assignment in quotation. Ah, uh, before that, I promise that I will uh, uh, do that assignment, right? Which I gave you the small exercise. Right. So this one, all exercise I gave you. <clears throat> right. So in quarter term exercise twenty ten, I will rush that right because I have another assignment to do. <clears throat> As per the experts, which one is not correct? Under this shipping term, the seller provides the goods for collection by the buyer at the seller's own premises. The buyer arranges insurance against damage to the goods in transit. This term requires the least effort by the seller, but should not be used where the buyer cannot carry out export for export formalities. Seller must contract for carriage. And uh, what is the question? As per the X, uh, XW, that is X works. Which one is not correct? You know, in the X works contract or the X works in, in X works in quote term. Seller will have the least responsibility towards the buyer. He will prepare the goods in an exportable manner and keep in his premises or in a warehouse and notifies the buyer. He will not clear for exports. Neither he will contract for carriage. Neither he will contract for insurers. So that's the knowledge that we have with regard to exports. So with that knowledge, just see whether you can attempt that sort. Under this shipping term, the seller provides the goods for collection by the buyer at the own premises. It's right. The buyer arranges insurance against damage to the goods in transit. Buyer arranges insurance because buyer is not responsible in case of any contract of insurance, right? I told you there are only in quote terms, two in quote terms. What is the seller to cover insurance on behalf of the buyer? Whether the buyer is arranging the insurance for himself or not, it's not our concern. But he is not required to cover the insurance on behalf of the seller, obviously, because he is the person who receives the goods. So why he should cover the insurance to seller? Right. The, the answer B is no way out. The this term requires the least effort by the seller, but should not be used where the buyer cannot carry out the export formalities. Yes. Apart from the, <clears throat> apart from the what you call the Uh, two responsibilities devolved upon on the seller. That is one to keep the goods in exportable manner in his warehouse as agreed by the buyer, and the second one he notifies the buyer. Those are the two responsibilities devolved upon the seller in case of exports. And if he has fulfilled, that means he has completed the delivery. But when the buyer is supposed to come to the seller's country and clear for export. And due to certain documents formalities and hindrances where the language is concerned, sometimes, and if the buyer finds difficult of getting the export uh, licenses, export clearances, then at request of the buyer, sellers should assist. Sellers should assist. This is one of the liabilities of the seller. Sellers should assist. If the buyer unable to get the export license because there are certain countries will not allow the foreign nationals come and export the clearance. So if the buyer is unable to get the export clearance, then exports will not work. Then they have to shift on to another eco term called FCA, free carrier. 
pre-carry was the seller to clear the export. The rest of the thing is like the experts. Right. That is why the question answer C is there. This, uh, this term requires the least effort by the seller, but should not be used where the buyer cannot carry out the export formalities. Right. Seller must contract for carriage. No, not in uh, experts, not in uh, what you call uh, FCA, not in FAs, not in FOB. Right. Where does it state? In A3, in A3 in every input term. Right, second one. Which of the following will be a requirement under the, all the different input terms? Seller clear regulatory clearances in their country? No, because in experts, seller doesn't clear anything. Seller provides the goods in travel worthy packaging. Yes, even in experts, he has to keep the goods in travel worthy packaging. He can't just let the goods to be perished and notify the buyer. It should, it should be properly packed and the exportable manner means travel worthy packaging. Right. Seller identify the carrier. No, there are instances seller do not identify the carrier in case of FOB, FAS, FCA. Buyer nominates the carrier and ship. Seller decides uh, the date of delivery. You know, in case of FCA and XWorks especially, Seller doesn't have any say <coughs> with regard to the date of delivery. That's the buyer's account. Yes, on the buyer's account. Question number three. Which of the following, the so answer for that question is B, right? Which of the following items will the seller not have the responsibility for cargo insurance? It's an easy question, right? Uh, which of the following items? Will the seller not have the responsibility for cargo insurance? According to the answer given here, seller has the responsibility in CIP. That's why the letter I is there. Other than CIP, CIF. So, which of the following items seller not have the responsibility means answers will be A, B, and D. CFR, DDP, FOB. <coughs> uh, seller do not have any responsibility. And uh, apart from CIP and CIF, for the rest of the nine inco terms, seller do not have any responsibility. So when I say seller do not have responsibility, don't take the other side of the coin, where the buyer has to be responsible if they no. Buyer is not responsible for any inco term <coughs> to cover insurance on behalf of the seller. Remember that buyer need not, buyer is not obligatory to cover any contract for insurance for any of the inco terms. Right. Question number four. In which term will the seller have to deliver the goods uh, to a carrier identified by the buyer? Identified by the buyer, FCA, FOB, FAS, right? Uh, uh, FCA, uh, FCA, FOB. FCFOB and FAS, right. Uh, in experts, seller will not uh, ship the goods. He will just keep the goods, right. In uh, So, answer for this will be B and D. Right. I'll skip the question number five for the moment. The question number six, in which of the following would be the seller be responsible for nominating the carrier? So, Seller is responsible for nominating carrier for, for other than FCA, FOB and FAS, other than FCA, FAS and FOB, free carrier, free alongside ship, free on board. In those three instances, buyer will have the entitlement to nominate the ship. So therefore, seller is responsible for nominating carrier in CFR in this answer. But CFR, CIF, CIP, CPT, then all D terms, uh, seller will be responsible to nominate the carrier. Right. Uh, and you can study well, uh, get an idea on that if you read the A4 delivery. In which of the following, next one, in which of the following situations would seller have to claim for goods lost in transit? Where the seller 
then you have to think in which you could have the seller has the custody of the goods then only he can claim right now see in case of a 4b what the seller's responsibility to keep the goods or place the goods uh, on board the vessel nominated by the buyer he keep, uh, keep the goods he places the goods on board the vessel the risk passes on to buyer right so if something happens during the voyage seller is not seller uh, seller doesn't have any concern about it right cpt carriage paid to or carriage insurance paid cpt and cip it's the same right except for the contract of insurance in case of cip in which of the policy situation would the seller have to claim for goods lost in transit in cpt and cip that cpt and cip mainly uh, occurs where the goods being taken in charge from an inlet example goods are moving that is goods are exporting from uh, verahara to mumbai say so from verahara to mumbai that's a you you don't have a you, you don't have one leg you have a land leg and a sea leg and a one leg again a headland leg again right if, if the goods are going from verahara to new delhi say right so you have a landlock uh, place verahara then come to colombo port is a pre carriage then from colombo port up to mumbai is air, air freight or sea freight and from mumbai to new delhi is again by land or by air so there are lots of modes of transport happening in there so that's why <coughs> you need to have a combined transport bill of lading combined transport bill of lading it could be a air freight it could be a sea way bill like that so <coughs> so therefore uh, you need to use the inco term cip and cpt uh and the risk passes once the seller uh, taken in charge the goods taken in charge, not the seller rather the once the buyer gives the goods to the freight forwarder uh to take in charge of the goods in where here the risk passes on to buyer right so if there something happens from where here up to new delhi <coughs> seller is not responsible therefore seller has to contract for insurers right in case of cip and cif so fob cpt and cip cif again the same thing same thing right the only difference between cif and cip is CIF, the responsibility, the seller's responsibility is port to port. You can't have a shipment from Verahara to Mumbai. You have to have Colombo to Mumbai. That's the only difference, right? Risk passes, no sort of goods being placed on board the vessel, like the FOB, but in CIF, seller nominates the carrier, right? <coughs> now, DDP, that's the rival mean. So the seller has to do all the things. When something happens during the voyage seller should be able to claim from the insurer <coughs> right so the answer appropriate answer would be for that is ddp <coughs> the i'll use the maggie board for the question number 5 Right. These are the level inco terms. So when you are writing an inco term, CF, CFR, CFR or CIF against uh, amount, you can't just say CFR. Right? So I have given you a what you call the article, set of articles which regard inco terms. In every caption, it says what you need to insert 
after the input term. So here you need to insert, you need to insert named place. When you say X works, then the question arises where? So you have to say X works Patal. X works Urugodavat. you have this, uh, what you call this, go downs or continue yards. X works very seven. Like that. So you have to put the name place. Right? Pre carrier, again, name place. Name place. Free along the ship. Name port of shipment. Name port of shipment. After a phase, you have to say, you have to insert the name port of shipment. You can't just say it like this. You have to say a phase Colombo, a phase Singapore, right? A phase Hamburg, like that. A 4B. Name port of shipment. Name port of shipment. You need to buy her this, huh? CPT. Name place of destination. Name place of destination. CIP. Name place of destination. CFR and CIF name port of destination. Destination. <coughs> that in the early version, that delivered at terminal or delivered place unloaded. Name place of destination. Or name place of uh, delivery. Delivery. DDP named place of destination. Right. So we need to have that knowledge to answer the question number five. Right. Now you need to thorough on this uh, kind of questions because. Uh, you might get tested in MCQs, right? Export is in Hong Kong. Export is in Hong Kong. Question number five. Export is in Hong Kong. Import is in the UK. Right. So the export is in Hong Kong. Import is in UK. The United Kingdom. Which of these input terms could apply? CFR, FOB, CIF. So they have said CFR Hong Kong, FOB London, and CIF London. So without being, you know, get caught to the answers being given in there, we'll just to take the CFR, FOB, and CIF and see, according to our knowledge, how it happens. Right. CFR, FOB, CIF. Right? If CFR being used, you need to insert the name port of destination. Can you find that here? Either CFR or CIF, you have to put name port of destination. Name port of destination. Name port of destination in the sense the importer's port. Importer's port. So, export is in UK, uh, sorry, Hong Kong, and the import is in UK. So if you use CFR, you cannot say CFR Hong Kong. So that answer is wrong. Right? CFR Hong Kong cannot be. Right? And if you use FOB, 
FOB, you need to insert name port of shipment. Name port of shipment. Fine. So FOB export is in UK. Sorry, Hong Kong. Export is in Hong Kong. Right? So here we have to say then FOB Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a port. Right? In Hong Kong, the port of Hong Kong is called the Hong Kong port. Right? Like Kalam. Right? FOB Hong Kong. So the answer given FOB London is wrong. CIF. Right? If it is CIF like the CFR, you have to insert the name port of destination. Name port of destination, you say. It should be UK, but here they have given us CIF London, so that's also wrong. CIF London, you can't say according to this question. Right? Now we'll go to the answers. Right? One only. Only one. What is one CFR Hong Kong? CFR Hong Kong is wrong. Right? Then B. 1 and 3. 1 and 3. 1 and 3 is the same thing. CIF and CFR. So that's not wrong. C. Only. Only 3. Right? Only 3. What is only 3? CIF London. CIF London is wrong again. D. Any one of them. Any one of them. So, what would be the appropriate, uh, what do you call the, the answer for this thing? If the export is in Hong Kong, import is UK, you can say CIF Adin is right, huh? CIF London is right. You can say CIF London. CIF Felix Stowe. If it is CFR, you can say the same thing. Now you see the import is in UK, but you cannot say CIF UK because if you use the equal term CIF or CFR, you have to use the name port of shipper, not the country of shipper. In port of shipper. That is why CF London become right. Right. So the answer would be there. Only, uh, only three. That is CF London. <clears throat> right. Take the next assignment. <clears throat> The important assignment. Question number two. Right. I'll give some points. I will not structure the answer and I will let you to structure the answer. Right. Question number two. Equal assignment. The Sri Lanka export. Kenny Limited wishes to export shoes to Germany and the shipment is to be made uh, from the port of Colombo to Hamburg. And the buyer wants the exporter to arrange pay the sea freight. Right? Pay the sea freight. Right. Now, before going to that, that you can try that, right? You do that question and send. Uh, what do you call send a uh, reply to me? I'll tackle the question number one. A Sri Lanka importer, IPLC company, is negotiating with an exporter, EPLC, from Mumbai for the import of a consignment of goods to be air freighted to Colombo. Coming from where now? Mumbai to Colombo, right? He is prepared to deliver the goods at Mumbai International uh, Airport, cleared for exports. 
what terms from Inco Terms 2010 could be used for this transaction? Right? You have to list out all the Inco Terms, eleven Inco Terms, X plus F C F A S F O B like that, and eliminate one by one. Right? Do that exercise. You uh, put that Inco Terms one un, uh, one under the other, and eliminate one by one. I will tell you how to eliminate one or two uh, Inco Terms like this. The Sri Lankan importer. IPS is negotiating with an exporter, EPSC from Mumbai, for the import of a consignment of goods to be air freighted to Colombo. So, the, what are the incoterms you can uh, eliminate straight away? C group ones. Not the C group, rather CIF and CFR, uh, FOB and FAS. That is, could be used exclusive for sea and inland waterways, could be eliminated. Right, that is uh, come again. Uh, FAS, FOB, CFR, and CIF could be eliminated. So there are only seven inco terms now. Right, <clears throat> and the, that is because of the word air freighter. Air freighter to Colombo is prepared to deliver the goods at Mumbai International Airport, cleared for export. So seller is requested or seller's responsibility is to. Clear for export, then Xbox phone come. In Xbox, clear the seller need not clear for exports. Right? So then Xbox Xbox phone come. So we have FCA, CPT, and CIP. Then we have the D group, that DEP and DDP. Right? Now here uh, the clear for exports. Uh, rather, Yafra to Colombo prepared to deliver the, uh, uh, deliver the goods at Mumbai International Airport cleared for export. So we notice the clearance of the exports, but that's another another important catch. Where do the goods be delivered? At the delivery in Mumbai International Airport. So the, the goods will not brought to the buyer's country. Right? So the D group is eliminated completely. Understood? So the only leftover is FCA. So when you answer, you need to mention why you are eliminating one by one. That is the exercise you need to do. Very easy, right? You list down the eco terms and say X was, uh, will not apply since uh, the seller is clearing for exports. See, uh, the, the FAS, FOB, CFR and CIF will not uh, uh, apply since the consignment is under AFRI. So likewise, you need to eliminate the inco terms right so the question one and two i answered you structure this thing question two is a very good answer and it's a repetitive question so you have to tackle that question somehow there and give me a feeder to my mail right <clears throat> and uh, Now I have given a, a, a presentation. I hope that you are taking printouts on those sources as well. Uh, what you call uh, PowerPoint, uh, point, point form. I have given some slides. Uh, that is uh, with regard to document credits, acceptance, short term loan, export per bill purchase kind of thing. You thoroughly read that and come. Don't buy heart or this thing. Study. You didn't do that. You just read and come because next Sunday we are going to start the revolving SE facilities. Right, so read and come that one. The reason why I gave you the uh, presentation now itself. Um, go through the go through carefully the differences between import uh, what you call the trust receipt loan and uh, uh, import pledge loans. Right, both are import loans. All right, but then there are differences. I have given the differences. So go through that. Right. Right. Now we'll do. It's two o'clock now, so we'll do uh, a for exam. Right. Tell the question number one. 
question number one in the assignment two question number one in assignment two just uh, give me a uh, feedback uh, for at least one of one or two students by one or two students whether you have all the three assignments of forex just say yes i gave you one assignment the other day and two and three this time just see whether you have all three intact now so just give me a feedback quickly Let me know uh, at least by one or two students whether 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 you have uh, whether you have uh, you know collected uh, both forex assignment one and two all together you have you should have three assignments just see whether you have right uh, thank you Gerald I mean no no I had a little bit of issue uh, with the <clears throat> With the handout today, so I was wondering whether you often did not get right. Then we'll focus the right. Thank you, Tarushika, and uh, we'll focus the uh, assignment. Uh, what do you call the question number one on assignment two? Right. So, what is the requirement? It says the rates of exchange quoted for the two forward exchange conduct booked by Lanka limited uh that is the question so there's only one leg i suppose there's no uh import leg right so this is how the question goes <clears throat> lanka limited Colombo is an exporter of garments made into the european union lanka limited entered into contract with metal company to export ready-made garments for a total value of five hundred thousand on fob Colombo basis now you see Looking at the Inco term, you should know where the country of export is in case of uh, uh, what you call in case of FOB, FA. FA. Now, when you say FOB, Colombo, that means the goods are, goods are shipped from Colombo. If it is CIF, Colombo, that is goods are coming into Colombo. Right? Right. Total value of 500,000 on FOB, Colombo basis. The concern means to be shipped from Colombo to France in two installments. The first uh, shipment is 300 and to be shipped during 10th week from the rate of contract. And the second shipment is 200 that coming from the 14th week. Proceeds are expected uh, to be received by your bank in Colombo during the second week of the rate of uh, shipment. Right. So first export shipment, uh, take the base of calculation, I'm rushing. So you need to take it, uh, take it down very quickly. First export shipment. This shipment is made. This shipment is made. I'm just looking at the question I'm telling you, right? The base of calculation could be, you know, structured. Looking at the question itself. That's how even I am telling you the base of calculation. Right. This shipment is made during 10th week for the date of contract. <clears throat> 10th week from the rate of contract. It will take two weeks to receive proceeds. It will take for, uh, it will take two weeks to receive proceeds uh, from the date of shipment. From the date of from the date of shipment. Therefore, contract will have to be booked for 12 weeks. Therefore, contract will have to be booked for 12 weeks. For two months fixed and for one month option. 12 weeks for two months fixed and for one month option. <clears throat> so none of you should have a problem or an issue 
to take it down that and why I'm saying like that, right? So calculate the fixed period is not an issue for you now. <clears throat> right. So the contract is booked for two months fixed and for one month option. Right. So USD LTR what is equal to 13050 this is export rate. 13050. So two months fixed and one month option is so I will say and two months forward 0 0.95 114.45 114.45 you are to USD what is 1.2070 So let's three months forward. It's equal to point zero zero three three point zero zero three three. Therefore, the trust currency will be that is euro to LKR will be 1.2037 into 114.45. I have given the answer. Just see whether the answer is right. I'll have to do. 1.2037 into 14 I'm getting 137.763465. Right. So since the fifth digit is more is uh, more than five, so we'll uh, we'll say as 137.763465. So right? No problem, right? Everybody understood, right? I remember one student last time saying, last time or the previous time saying that uh, that uh, uh, she or he missed uh, the early sessions of the forex uh, sessions, and I requested uh, the student to you know call me back, but that she she or he did not. So. If uh, if the if that particular student is in the in the forum, just uh, you know call me so that I could you know uh, so try to try to bridge you to catch up with the last uh, sessions. All right. Then the base of calculation of the second export shipment. Right. This shipment is made. This shipment is made during 14th week from the date of contract. During 14th week from the date of contract. 14th week. Proceeds will receive two weeks from the date of shipment. Then 
therefore contract will have to be booked <clears throat> therefore contract will have to be booked 16th week 16th week from the date of contract from the date of contract uh, for three months fixed and for one month option three months fixed and for one month option <clears throat> three months fixed and one month option Right. You get it to help here. Spot is equal to under thirty fifty. And three months forward at three months forward. One forty hundred fourteen ninety. Your do is the what is equal to one point two zero seven zero less four months forward. Zero zero four four. One point two not two six. Therefore, the cross currency that is U R two L T I is equal to one point two not two six into hundred fourteen ninety. I have given the answer as uh, under thirty eight one seven eight seven. So we will see whether we are getting that one point two not two six into hundred fourteen ninety. Yes, hundred thirty eight point one seven eight seven. Hundred thirty eight point. One seven eight seven. The question is, they are asking only the rate of exchange, right? They are not asking the amount of money the Lanka Dimitri is expected in the case of the first export and the second export shipment. So you need not, you know, multiply this by the value of the shipment and show. You just give me the, give the rate. Uh, then the second part, the loss of profit should be profit or loss that Lanka Limited incurred or earned on the cancellation of the forward exchange contract covering the goods not shipped. Right. So that part we need to read. Uh, that is the last paragraph of the question. The first export shipment was effected and paid as, a, as expected. Uh, however, Lanka Limited and Vital Company agreed to cancel the second export shipment uh, on 12th October. So, when the cancellation has happened on the 12th October, then they have informed the bank that the second export shipment is not going to happen. Right? So, that is why now we have already booked the contract for 137 for three months fixed for one month option. Now, the customer is uh, telling that he is unable to uh, do the export. And therefore, to cancel the forward contract being booked. Right. Now, right, cancellation. 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 Forward exchange contract for this shipment. 
forward exchange contract for the shipment. was made was made for three months fixed and for one month option for three months fixed and for one month option fixed period ends fixed period ends on 5th november 2010 5th november 2010 three that is three months fixed means from the date of contract that is from 5th august uh, going forward three months will be ending on 5th november three months from 5th august right september october november so the fixed period ends on 5th november 2010. 2010. Now we have a glance on on which day the cancellation request been made to the bank on 12th October. 12th October. Now I I will uh, drop the uh, timeline. It, uh, I am drawing the timeline just to explain to you, right? You didn't take down or just you take it down for your own references and to to get it simplified. But you didn't mention in the Excel, right? You can you know do it mentally. Fifth August is the contract date of contract from fifth August to fifth of September one month from fifth of September to fifth of October two months from fifth of October to fifth of November is three months. So fixed period is here. Fixed period ends on 5th of November, that's why I said. Then 5th November to 5th December is the option period. But the cancellation request being made on 12th October, that is in between 5th October and 5th November, somewhere here. Cancellation. This is not happened during the option period. We did a sum where the cancellation had occurred during the option period. So then we decided to take the spot trades. Now, in this case, of course, cancellation has had happened during the last month of the fixed period. This is the last month, this is the first month, second month, and third month. That's the last month of the fixed period. The cancellation has occurred. Or rather, request of cancellation been occurred in the last month of the fixed period. You remember one thing I said in the first house, in case of an option, in case of an option period, the customer is uh, entitled but not liable. But in case of a fixed period, customer is entitled and liable. Right? You refer to your earlier, uh, what you call the side notes. I did say, in case of a fixed period, Customer is liable, not only his but he's not only his entitled, but he's liable. So therefore, this is a fixed period. Due to the fixed period of his cancelling, therefore, the what the bank will sell one month forward to the customer as a palliative measure. One month forward. Right? So take down the cancellation up to this point, you took it down. That is fixed period ends on. 5th November uh, 2010. Since the cancellation request, since the cancellation request being made on 12th October 2010. Which is in the last month of the fixed period. Which is in the last month of the fixed period.
profit and all loss profit and all loss due to cancellation of forward exchange contract profit and all loss due to cancellation of uh, forward exchange contracts will be calculated will be calculated on one month forward on one month forward on one month forward at the prevailing date of cancellation remember those words are at the prevailing date of cancellation so we are considering the rates of 12th october in other words at the prevailing date of cancellation right USD APR spot that is on 12th of October is equal to 114 10. You know why I am taking the highest rate? The other day I explained to you in case of a cancellation of export, it gets the feature of a selling feature of an import. Therefore, we are selling at a higher price. But in this case, if the customer can customer cancel during the last month of the fixed period, not only we are quoting the higher price, but we are calculating on one month forward, right? So one month forward being given as 50, 60 cents. Look at the grid, is 50, 60 cents on the USD LTR, and on the USD LTR is 130 to 120, leaving on the decibels, 130 to 120. Right. So I will say. You do a spot given, then I will say and one month forward. At one month forward, 0 0.60. You are the USD spot. One point two not ninety five. One point two not ninety five. One point two not ninety five. And one month forward is hundred thirty to hundred twenty. So therefore, we have to deduct that one month less one month forward and say zero zero one two. Right? It says point one two not divided by one hundred. It will be point zero zero one two. So when you deduct what happened. You tend to quote a rate less than the spot. My idea is to give the highest possible rate. So therefore, I will not use the one month forward rate for the UR to USD. I will take the spot rate. So therefore, UR to LTR is equal to 1.2095 into 11470. Right, so that will come into 1.2095 into 11470 will come to 138.72965. So that means it's 97. Under thirty point seven two nine seven. Right? Don't con get confused now. I added one month forward here because it's more profitable. I did not add the one month forward in case of a, in case of the other leg, because if I if I consider the one month forward, I may I have to deduct. So if I deduct. I take the code away that that's the spot too. I have a small question now. Instead of 5060, 
these are the sum say is the sum points 50 60 cents instead of 50 60 if the question was given as 60 50 then what happens then in here i cannot say and i will say less less than one, one power and here i will say 0 0.50 since i am deducting i will quote a rate less than 114 10 therefore i will not deduct either in that if that the scenario then i will take the spot rate in here and the spot rate of here now it's clear i guess right right so this is the rate that the customer has to pay to the bank since he cancelled but customer was to expect 130.1787 if the contract was sailing through so customer was to get 130.1787 and he has to give back 7297 to the bank because he cancelled. So it appears that the customer is incurring a loss here. Incurring a loss. Right. Therefore, and say therefore, loss incurred. Loss incurred. Loss incurred per rate. The, the question is asking loss incurred on the cancellation of the Huawei exchange contract. How are uh, they are asking straight away the loss incurred, right? So just say, don't say per rate, just say loss incurred due to cancellation of Huawei exchange contract. Due to cancellation of Huawei exchange contract. Of the second export shipment, of the second export shipment is equal to is equal to hundred thirty eight point one seven eighty seven. That's the rate being booked, and because sir we cancelled, we have to give back hundred thirty eight. 0.7297 multiply by the value of the shipment value of the shipment is uh, 200,000 euro you will get the amount Right. 
So I'm getting a negative figure here. One uh, under 1787 minus 1987 is a negative figure. But I said that the narration loss incurred. So therefore, loss P is 110 to 100, right? Profit P is negative 110 to 100. Right. Now you will see when you cancel the contract. Now at that moment, the customer's account has to get debited by 110 to 100. If the customer will not have funds, what the issue? The bank is exposed for 110 to 100, right? So, when a forward exchange contract has been booked in the first south set, bank should have had earmarked, earmarked the possibility of undercovering of funds uh, to earmark a limit against the customer. So, this is why in a bank, when the customer wants to book forward exchange contract, bank will always earmark a limit at least 20% of the contract value to cover any losses or damages due to cancellation of forward exchange contract before maturity. Right. I hope that you have understood everybody. Can I have a little bit of a one or two nudges in here saying that yes, uh, or want me to explain again? In the meantime, I'll choose another sum. Right. Vishwa, thank you. Nagreshwaran, thank you. I need two more, two more yeses. Two more yeses. If understood well. Tarshika, thank you. One more. Now, these are the guys always respond. Anybody else? Ah, that's a new name. Ah, that's new. <laughs> coming, coming newly joining now. I hope that uh, he or she is not. Missed a lot of things, but then again, any, anybody else say good on the sum? I will go to the next sum. One more person, please. So, whether so it perhaps, uh, right? Thank you. Then I'll move on to the question number three on the assignment number, uh, assignment number two. Right now, since I, I hope that you got the hang of it. Uh, so I will uh, not do the whole sum together. I will give, leave out that for you to do. But there are certain variances sum to sum. Right? There are variances. So you mustn't get caught for those variances that ending with uh, getting marks cut. So, so I will do the variances and sharpen you to focus more on the question. Right? Question number three is some kind of that. Uh, right. Fernando limited the uh, hope you have uh, fetched the correct question. Fernando limited. Your valid custom is an exporter, ready made garments from Sri Lanka. They have received an export order to value of 500,000 sterling pounds from a buyer in UK. DA terms payable 60 days from the date of shipment. So I want you to underline that word date of shipment. Date of shipment. The order is to be dispatched in two shipments. Uh, the first uh, two shipments. The first shipment to the value of 300,000 to be made during 10th or 11th week and the second shipment for 200,000 made during 14th or 15th week and uh, respectively from the last contract. It takes a further one week for the proceeds to be received. So it's very similar to the other sums up to now that I have given. But I want you to underline this also. It takes a further one week for the proceeds to be received. Now, that's the thing. Now, when you read the sum over and over again, you see certain differences, right? Why I'm giving this is because you have, you know, got into some kind of a pattern. Now, this is how you need to do. But you know, it's not the case. You have a little bit of variances as traps. One trap is the, uh, the first one that I want to like, and the second one is the, the presentation period or the 
it takes further one week to receive the proceeds from the unit of shipment, right? Now, I hope that you can write the base of calculation. So, don't waste time of writing the base of calculation. Now, you keep space for the base of calculation. Now, based on the C sum, give me the uh, number of total weeks that you are going to calculate for the fixed period and for the optional period. So, put in the, uh, what you call in the chat box column, the total number of weeks only. Just say total number of weeks. Then I know where you stand. Total number of weeks. Now here, it says 10th or 11th week, so, so take the most stretched week. The more uh, you stretch the week more, you give the benefit to the customer. So take the 11th week, right? When the customer says 10th or 11th week, uh, uh, that I might get it, I will take the 11th week. If I take 10th week, what happens on, uh, comes on the 11th week, then the issue. But if it's 11th week, 10th week comes a cover. So take the most stretched week. Right, now we are comfortable. Now tell me the total number of weeks in there. Quickly. Two, one. No, no, no. I am asking the total number of weeks only. You are. You may be right, General. I, I didn't go for that. I am just asking the total number of weeks. That's all. According to the previous sum that we did. Twelve weeks, right. So you got twelve weeks. Anybody else saying other than twelve weeks? Only just put in. If everybody agrees with 12 weeks, uh, don't mention. If other than 12 weeks, just tell me. Right. So everybody is agreeing with uh, the students, uh, I think, for 12 weeks. Right. So I am disagreeing. The reason why I took this sum. Right. Now we have to keep wide open eyes wide open, why I am saying that, the reason why I wanted you to underline those two sentences, right. Now, don't try to, you know, figure out what is the difference between this and the previous sum, that you do it at leisure and see why I am saying that, right. Right, I've been taking a time like this. Say, if the shipment is uh, happening, forget about this sum now. Huh? Now, shipment is occurring, say, on the 26th of uh, July 2020. 26th of July 2020, shipment is happening. On what terms? 60 days from the date of shipment. 60 days from the date of shipment. So 60 days from the date of shipment is difficult for me to calculate, right? So I will say 17 20. 17 20. roughly will take on September 1st, right? September 1st. So this is the due date or the date of maturity. 60 days from here is 1st of September. Fifty days. So that the tenor is fixed now, saying that 60 days from the end of shipment. Now, when the documents come, when the documents come, or rather when the proceeds come from the uh, First week of the date of shipment, right? First week of the shipment, does the due date changes? Right, if that question is difficult, I will put it a different way. If the proceed comes two weeks after the date of shipment, with this method date shaken, no, it is fixed. It is fixed. So you didn't have the documents to determine when the fixed uh, due date is. Because if you receive the documents, you are going to see what is where the bill of lading is, right? And calculate the data from the date of BL, the 
due date. Suppose shipment being done on the 1st of July and the documents received on the 15th of July, 60 days does not run from the date of receipt of the documents, but from the date of shipment. How do you find the date of shipment? In the document, you have the bill of lading. In the bill of lading, the date of issue will be the date of dispatch or the date of shipment, and we calculate 60 days from the date of shipment. So this due date will not be shaky, that is rigid and fixed because of uh, the, what you call the uh, tenor is determined from the rate of shipment, not from the rate of receipt of the documents. Therefore, the presentation period of one week or two weeks or three weeks will not be considered for the calculation of the rate of maturity. Understood? Right. Now you take down the base of calculation like this. I keep that as a model or a template so that if you come across the tenor being given at the date of shipment, then you have to uh, give this uh, base of calculation. See, first export shipment. This shipment is made during 10th or 11th week from the date of contract. This shipment is made during 10th or 11th week from the date of contract. 11th week from the date of contract. Contract. Payable on 60 days. DA. Payable on 60 days. DA. Payable on 60 days. DA. Since the due date of the DA bill, since the due date, you can say maturity also, right? Since the due date of the DA bill, DA bill. is determined determined from the date of shipment date of shipment of shipment The time lag of one week, the time lag of one week one week. The time lag of one week. That is from the date of uh, shipment up to the date of receipt of proceeds. Time lag of one week. That is from the date of shipment up to the time of receipt of proceeds. Up to the time of receipt of proceeds, that is one week, right? One week will not be considered, will not be considered, will not be considered, right? Will not be considered. Therefore, contract will have to be booked. Therefore, contract will have to be booked. Eleven weeks from the date of contract. But for Two months fixed and for one month option. Right. For this base of calculation, you will get additional one mark because of that logic. The rest of the thing is easy, right? Second export shipment of the same. Right. We'll go to the import leg now quickly. It says 
in order to manufacture the ready made garments for that ready made we have to import raw materials to the value of 300000 sterling pound from supply in singapore the payment for the raw materials is to be made under the use and sales use and sales means a deferred payment as right uh, payment uh, on a future date use and sales payable third day from the date of shipment again you saw payment shipment day right so and the shipment will be made three weeks after date of issue five the goods and the shipping documents are expected to receive its seal number within one week from the date of shipment. That you underline. We are not going to consider that. That is called the presentation period. Because whenever the documents are going to receive, whether it takes one week or two weeks or three weeks, we are not going to calculate the due date from the receipt of documents, but from the shipment date. Because it says very clearly, 30 days from the shipment date. Right? 30 days from the shipment date. So as a thumb rule, I will give. Uh, this part, you take down this and study thoroughly and try to attempt the question that I have given in here. Right. If, this, if the maturity date is given in this way, number of days, number of days, say 30 number of days or 6 number of days from acceptance acceptance or number of days from or after sight or number of days from negotiation these are the various variations that you could see in sums right or number of days users. If you see a sum, you are the Kerapedian, 60 number of days or 30 number of days from acceptance, from or after sight, from negotiation or after negotiation, from or after users. Then you add the presentation period. You like the presentation period. Right? That's another one. Number of days, deferred payment. You add the presentation period, one week or two weeks to receive documents, the period of time that you add. But if you see like this, number of days from Date of shipment. Date of shipment. Or number of days from date of dispatch. Dispatch. Or it says number of days from middle of reading day. Bill of Reading date. Then this evidence says that you need to calculate from the date of shipment, right? You need to worry about the presentation period. Then you don't consider the presentation period. Right? So that way this also right. So you can proceed uh, with a uh, couple of sums now. Uh, try and attempt the question number. It's a very good sum, actually. Uh, question number, question number five. Right, you have to do the other sums also as well. Try to do the question number five. Uh, and all the variances that I have mentioned is covered in here. So you will have a thorough knowledge on the forex sum if you make an attempt right on question number five. Right? I have given the answers. Answers are right, I guess. So 
Now you can do all the assignments in the uh, what you call in the assignments that I have given, except the question number four of for assignment three. So leave out the question number four, and the rest you can tackle it. Right. So if you have an issue, you just uh, you know uh, send me a mail or a text. Refer to the question number and the assignment number. I will assist you. So, so next Sunday we will do uh, the revolving facilities uh, and some uh, questions. And if you have any difficulty, the for some during the week that if I get a feedback from you all, then I will do that particular for some also as well. Right. So. Uh, uh, I have 10 minutes more. I'll give a little bit of a hint on the, uh, the what you call the revolving facility before that to make a paving so that I will not kill that much of time the next Sunday. Uh, that timeline, how it works in case of a uh, letter of credit cycle. Take it down quickly and you're going to have a glance on that or a stare. If you have one week for that and you have a lot of homework, do that. You need to, you know, double up now a little bit accuracy right right so I'm taking the taking a timeline Again, the transaction. Again, the transaction. You are driving with me, right? First, first uh, point, first point, the first plot or the first point, first transaction is the letter of credit. Letter of credit. So, when you say letter of credit could be signed. Or usage. So there are diff two difficult applications with regard to site and usage. Right. When the letter of credit is being opened by the issuing bank at the request of the buyer or the importer, the exporter or the beneficiary, beneficiary will perform. And he will send the cross, he will effect the shipment. Effect the shipment. So he will defend the shipment, say, four weeks after the letter of credit. We'll say shipment. Once he effects the shipment, he will get the bill of lading, obviously, to his hand. He will have the rest of the documents also. He will collate all the documents according to the letter of credit requirements, and he will present the documents for negotiation. So the documents will be received after say another two weeks or three weeks or four weeks time, we will say four weeks time, documents are received. Documents are received. Right? So this is how the cycle goes. LCB is open first, shipment is affected and the documents are received. Right? So that's all that you need to know uh, before I come on next Sunday, right? And one more thing, when you open a letter of credit in the bank books, say you open the customer opens a letter of credit for one dollar, say the bank will open a double, bank will create a double entry by debiting the LC outstanding account by one dollar. And creating LC open account by one dollar. Right? This is a derivative of this. This is a debit uh, balance. You get a credit balance in here. These are these are the entries called contra entries in the bank or the accounting system. There are plenty of contra entries in that sense in trade. 
So we are taking one of the constraints, one link of the constraint is the LC outstanding and try to match with the timeline next only. So we have the same storyline, but we have been used to in case of forex for these symbolic facilities. For the forex, import says story. He gets uh, what he call he has an export to satisfy. For him to satisfy the export, to make the export right, he will import raw material. Same story that you find the revolving as he saw says there. Right? But in the forex sum, he will tell the bank to book forward and determine what the amount that he will receive in case of an export and what the amount that he will have to pay for the raw material that he import. Same thing in here, but the requirement is different. Here the customer says, I have raw materials to import, I have export to fulfill. And you structure a limit, a package for me to do that. Between that package, I will, what do you call, rather with, with the limits, and then I can go ahead and for book forward or whatever it is. Whatever that you need to do later, you have to have a limit being fixed. That is called a facility in a bank. So the bank will jot down all the, fa the facilities, you call the timeline, the trade recovery, you call the lead time and put in a piece of paper called a letter of offer. Letter of offer. So that is the one that we are going to discuss from next Sunday, at least for two classes. Then you are thorough. You will be thorough only if you do the cycles. Right? So you become thorough, uh, maybe on the third or the fourth week, the, what do you call this, uh, revolving facilities, revolving facilities, and and uh, then the forex also. Then you have two questions right, right? By now you are through. But to have a merit, but you can't get 20 out of 10 in uh, 20 out of 20 for the forex, neither 20 out of 20. So you are in a danger zone. You have to have 51 marks, right? To get the pass. Right? It's rather 45 now. I'm not quite sure whether they have increased to 51. They are going to increase to 51. As it is 45, if you're not mistaken. So if you do the forex at the revolving facility sum, perfect price, still your five shop. So you have to tap the what you call the tap the URC question and the equator question also as well be on the safe side. Right. So that's uh, all for the moment. Uh, next Sunday we will uh, start. I I have the intention of starting with this. But if you have an issue with the forex sum, you can communicate with me so that I will assist as far as possible <coughs> with you isolatedly. But if particular question is, if I think is fruitful for all the people in, in students, since we are in the online platform, then I will do that question in the next session also as well. Right? <coughs> so have a good evening and have a good week and do the but it was exercises and the more one can have given. And any, any questions or any logistics I can entertain now for one or two minutes after that we will wind up. And again, I'm telling you if anybody wish the classes of forex initial initial stages, please do contact me. Uh, so that I could you know bridge you. Uh, last time I said that because of the request of one, uh, rather, when I noticed that uh, one student was uh, absent, but he or she did not call me, the reason I am reminding again. <coughs>